In this video, I will walk you through some ways you can solve the hands-on portion of the Tableau Desktop Certified Associate Exam Prep Guide. Please make sure to download the exam prep guide and the associated data set so that you can follow along. Tableau provides an exam guide for the Desktop Certified Associate Certification if you're interested in taking this exam. This exam guide will highlight the target audience, additional learning resources, the exam format. For the Certified Associate exam, it's a two-hour exam that has 36 questions. It is automatically scored. So as soon as you submit your exam, you know if you've passed or not. The passing score is 75% and the question format is multiple choice, multiple responses, and answering questions by exploring and digging into the data that you're provided. The skills measured in this exam include your knowledge of data connections, how to connect to multiple data sources, how you would organize or simplify your data, creating different kinds of charts. There are also questions on calculation and mapping, use of the analytics tab and using reference lines and trend lines and trend models, and also building up some dashboards. As with the specialist certification, timeliness is a critical component of this exam. You need to be able to manage your time answering the 36 questions and being able to allocate the proper time for each question. Before we start, please make sure to download the exam guide. And from here, there will be a link to this sample Superstore subset, which is an Excel file that will be used for the hands-on questions. Before we start, I'd like to note two things. The first one is I will show you how I would tackle these questions, how I would personally answer the questions. You may find other strategies, and that's the beauty of Tableau. You can answer the questions in many different ways. And as a second note, we're not necessarily looking for visualization best practices as we answer some of these questions. The goal is for us to be able to answer the questions quickly and not necessarily design some of the charts with best practices in mind. And with that, let's start with question number four. What is the percent of total sales for the home office customer segment in July of 2012? There's two things that come up in this question right away. It's the customer segment and also July of 2012. July of 2012 suggests we need to filter our data and percent of total also suggests quick table calculation. So for this, I will filter right away for July 2012. First by year, we'll select 2012. I'll drag order date again, and this time for a month, and this is July. For this, I am inclined to use a pie chart. So on the marks, change that to pie. Sales on angle, let's set the fit to entire view, and just the size a little bit. Drag customer segment to color. I'm gonna drag some of sales to label, so that's a control drag to label. I'm gonna add a quick table calculation to the label. Quick table calculation, this is percent of total. And I'm also going to drag customer segment to label so we can easily see it. And we are looking for home office. So the answer here is 23.97%. The answer for number four is letter B. Question number five, find the top 10 product names by sales within each region. Which product is ranked number two in both the central and west regions in 2011? The way I would answer this is by grouping everything by region and ranking all the products, and I will be using a table calculation called rank as well. So let me set this up. Let's drag region over. Let's take our product names. Let's take sales. We're going to sort this. I will copy sales to label, add a quick table calculation to the sales and label, this is going to be a rank. I'm going to set the scope to pane down because I want this to reset for every region. I will also change this to discrete so that I can display this right beside my product name. I'm going to copy over sales again to filters, change this one to continuous, and only look at one to two. Let's add a filter to region. We're only looking at central and west, so we can uncheck east and south. We're also missing one more filter because we're only looking at 2011. So I'm going to drag order date, filter by year 2011, and the answer is sharp. So for question number five, the answer is letter C. Question number six, 
in the technology product category, which unprofitable state is surrounded by only profitable states? Let's drag product category to filters, filter this by technology. And then here, because we are looking at state, we can create a map. Double click on state or province. We are looking at profit, so we can drag profit onto color. By default, this gives us a gradient, but we can double click on this color palette. We can change this to step color, so we only have two colors that we're looking at, one for profitable and one for unprofitable. Let's just double check that our midpoint or our center is at zero. I'm also going to copy state or province onto label so we can easily see the state names. So right now, just by visually looking at this, it looks like Colorado is surrounded by all profitable states. So the answer to question number six is A, Colorado. Question number seven. If 2013 sales numbers were expected to increase by 50% in the following year, what would be the total estimated sales for the consumer segment in 2014? This question will require a calculated field because we need to project that sales actually increases. And this data point doesn't exist in our current data source. So let's create a calculated field. Let's call this new sales. And this is going to be our sum of sales times 1.5 because it has increased by 50%. Let's drag customer segment to filters and leave only consumer. Let's drag order date to columns. And for this purpose, I'm going to drag the original sales over. I'm gonna change the mark to bar. Let's also drag the new sales over. And in here, there's a quick way to show mark labels. It's this shortcut over here. So it looks like based on our new sales, the 2014 value should be 816,000 999. So the answer to number seven is letter B. Question number eight. In which region do all product categories fall beneath the overall average profit? Let's drag region, product category. We're looking at profit. In the sidebar, let's switch to the analytics tab. Let's drag average line. And in here, we're going to choose table as a scope. Visually, we can already see that all the categories in South fall beneath this line. If you have a little bit of time, you can also create a calculated field that allows you to color code the bars. Let's start by creating an overall average profit field. From here, calculated field, let's call this overall average profit. This will use a table calculation called window average. And we need to pass in the sum of profit. And we can create a calculated field that just checks the current sum of profit to the overall average profit. So in here, calculated field, let's just call this above overall average profit. Let's take the sum of profit, it's greater than overall average profit. Let's drag this to color. Let's change the color palette. If it's true, gray, if it's false, orange or brown and in here we can easily see that all the categories in the south fall below that overall average profit so for question number eight the answer is d south question number nine which product subcategory has a shipping cost to sales ratio above three percent we can start by creating a calculated field for our shipping cost to sales ratio create a calculated field from here Let's call this shipping cost to sales ratio. This is going to be the sum of shipping cost divided by the sum of sales. Let's change the default property so it shows percentage. Let's get all our products of categories Let's get all our ratios. I'll sort this. Let's add a filter to the ratio. And we're looking at anything above 0 0.03. The answer here is paper. For question number nine, the answer is letter C. Question number 10. 
find the customer with the lowest overall profit. What is his slash her profit ratio? Let's start by creating a calculated field for our profit ratio. From here, create calculated field. Let's call this profit ratio. Sum of profit divided by sum of sales. Let's change the default property so it shows percentage. I will create a combined field here. Customer ID and customer name. Create, combined field. I'm gonna drag that over. Let's drag profit. Let's click on the sort icon once and twice to sort it in descending fashion. And we can drag profit ratio to label. So this customer has the lowest profit with a minus 771% profit ratio. Another way we can tackle this is by creating a set. So let's assume we have customer ID. We're going to put all the profit. We can display all of our profit ratio as a label as well. But we can create a set from customer ID. So right click, create a set. And from here, we can select the top tab by field. And in here, we're going to look at the bottom one customer ID based on profit. So the customer ID that will be in this set is the one that is least profitable. And once we have this, we can put this in filter. And from here, we can add the name. This gives us the exact same answer. So the answer to question number 10 is letter D. This is it for part one of the walkthrough. I hope you found it useful. I hope you were able to pick some new strategies on how you can answer some of these questions. In the second part of the walkthrough, we are going to go over questions number 11 all the way to 15. I'll see you next time.